My name is Jerry Forkner. I live in on a farm outside the city of Sweetwater, Tennessee. Welcome to my woods. Yeah, I walk out here in the woods just about every single day. There's always something new. Every time I walk, I'll see something different. You know, I walk the same thing every day. A different flower will come up or a mushroom will be there one day and not the next day. Or, you know, it'll come up and it'll get bigger. You know, and you can watch that whole life cycle. It, you know, and it changes over the year too with the seasons. You know, what I see that's so powerful is when trees fall over and push another tree down and it grows up through that. Uh, you know, the woods just have a way of going back to nature and going through those whole life cycles. So there's parts of these woods that people hadn't been in for 50 years and it's just fascinating to see. Yeah, you know, I've always made things all my life. That's just part of who I am. Uh, you know, I, I have to be making something all the time. So then walking through the woods and bringing in those things that I'm collecting and laying them out and looking at them and then turning them into uh, probably a felted project because, uh, you know, there's a lot of texture in the projects that I do. And that's, I think I like that. And there's so much texture in those different things in the woods. Uh, and I didn't realize how many different projects that I had done that had natural things in them. We have a kudzu patch, and uh, there's a way to get fibers out of the kudzu stems, so there are some weavings that I've done with the kudzu, and then we looked at the walnuts and how they have a dye in them. So there's just, there's a whole lot more out there that I wanna work on. I have wool on one side, and then this is a, a cloth that I wove on the other side. So all these fibers were straight on the loom and then when the wool shrinks, you get these different kinds of textures. So there's a whole number of different kinds of yarns on there. And, uh, this is another one. I love the mirror embroidery that they do in India. And you have to do these embroidery stitches around them to get them to hold in and I never kind of mastered those. So I was playing with the idea of uh, weaving a cloth and then felting behind it to hold that, uh, to hold those mirrors in. Yeah, all these processes are labor intensive. You know, they're all, all of them are labor intensive. So then, uh, then going through that process, there's a whole design process. You know, I found many times if I cheat the process, and want to just sit down and skip all the sampling that goes into it, it just never comes out right. So if you take the time to take the, you know, and it, it, there were so many things on that texture sample I had down there that I could take each one of those probably and spend a month on that, developing something that looks like that. I have this whole library of techniques to pull from. So hopefully I can, you know, I can, connect uh, the things I'm seeing out there in nature. The, and there's a lot of ways to do it because you look out and you can see the different colors that are out there this time of year. Uh, there's a time uh, in the spring when these little tiny uh, blue flowers come up and it's like you're walking on a blue carpet. You know, so there's just so many things that the lichens that are out there, uh, you know, that grow sort of organically and you see the different layers. So that, that you know, that's kind of what's next that I want to improve on. I think I'm sort of in a transition part in my life right now. I quit teaching children, which has been really hard for me, but you know, I just don't have the energy that I did when I was younger. <laughs> and it, you know, it was time to give that up. Uh, I think a lot of my value has been in teaching because people are, uh, 
people really love to make things and they'll come and take a class at the folk school and I feel like I'm enriching their lives. You know, I had a teacher come up to me one time uh, and I had the kids tell stories, you know, I taught, would model an Appalachian story to them because they uh, were local kids in Monroe County and they are uh, fourth graders. And a teacher came up to me and she says, I've got goosebumps. That kid that's up there reading his story right now hadn't participated in a single thing this year. So, uh, you know, if I've enriched somebody's life, I think that's more, uh, and I've, uh, you know, I feel like I'm enriching people's lives and making them happier. And then they're gonna go out and feel better about themselves and maybe do something good, more good in the world. And if you have a passion to make something, you don't need all that space. You just go do it. Uh, don't wait till you get ready. Just go make something every day. There, there's a lot of folklore out there with weaving, and this is one of my favorite quotes. Let me spin you some yarns, said the old woman with a twinkle in her eye as she sat by her wheel. And with hands and tongue she did and both were smooth, and both were true, and both warmed me well that winter.